Hello and welcome to Glitch Tech X. How are you lovely people? Now today's video is on a very debatable topic and AMD has been receiving flack from the PC community lately. Uh, the entire CPU support on the B450 chipset debacle might jog your memory. But that's a different topic. Today we're talking about the new B550 and the relatively not so new X570 chipsets from AMD. Motherboard manufacturers are already underway in manufacturing the B550 motherboards and the market should have decent availability by July since they were released on the 16th of June 2020. Now if you talk about the AM4 socket longevity, AMD made good on their promise of supporting the AM4 socket for a period of 5 years, so 2016 through 2020. Whether this will be supported in the future or not is a different case. As per authentic sources from AMD, the pin layout or the socket might change depending upon changes in the industry for I.O. technologies. AMD has also stated that they don't have any visibility of how and when that might happen, but they understand that the con consumers need to be kept posted about any changes. Now which one should you choose between the B550 and X570 motherboard? In a nutshell, B550 is still positioned for the budget build segment, although the prices indicate otherwise. There is a significant overlap in the prices of the B550 and X570 motherboards. So I would say that if you're looking to build a PC, you might want to wait until the dust settles. Since with the advent of new motherboards, the previous gen B450 motherboards might see a price drop. Well, that's my opinion about the current situation. But you're of course free to do whatever you want to do. The scenario is ever evolving and these are transient times. MSI has also announced a B550 motherboard and AMD Ryzen bundle promotion where you can get up to $60 in your Steam wallet. Comparing the B550 and the X570 motherboards, the biggest difference that's evident is the CPU support matrix. The 570 chipset supports more SKUs than the 550. The X570 supports Ryzen 2000 series processors, the Ryzen 3000 series processors with Radeon graphics, along with the newer Ryzen 3000 series processors and future Zen 3 Ryzen processors. A word of caution here, the Ryzen 3000 series processors and the Ryzen 3000 series processors with Radeon graphics are not the same. The CPUs are Zen Plus architecture in the latter. The B550 boards will not support Ryzen 1000 or 2000 series processors, whereas the X570 will still support the Ryzen 2000 series processors. The existing B450 users might be in a bind, as future processors with Zen 3 will need a selective beta BIOS, and only a few of the models will get this BIOS update since there are physical limitations to the amount of space on the BIOS chip, and this varies with the B450 motherboard model. The key difference between the B550 and X570 is the PCIe link used between the board and the CPU, and the way the PCIe lanes are split to the various I.O. options and paraphernalia. The CPU's capabilities are going to remain unchanged. So if the CPU supports PCI Gen 4, then that remains. It's a constant. However, the PCI version of the link between the chipset and the CPU is different in both the chipsets. For B550, PCI Gen 3 is used, whereas for the X570, PCI Gen 4 is used. This means that the X570 has separate PCI Gen 4 lanes off of the chipset, which are separate from the CPU lanes. These are referred to as general purpose lanes and can be reconfigured into almost anything by the board manufacturer. The Ryzen 3000 series processors support PCI Gen 4 and provide 16 usable Gen 4 lanes which go straight to the PCI Gen 4 slot for the GPU on the X570 board. And on the B550, we have 20 PCIe Gen 4 lanes, out of which 16 go straight to the GPU slot, and the remaining 4 can be reconfigured for SATA storage or X4 Gen 4 NVMe drives. Another difference is that X570 supports SLI and is an official SLI licensed product. This endorsement comes with its own cost, 
whereas the B550 boards are not marked as official SLI products and if a board manufacturer wants, they can test and certify the board by themselves, which saves on cost and hence makes B550 target the budget market. Due to the added complexity and the PCI bandwidth available thanks to the PCI Gen 4 lanes from the chipset on the X570 boards, the idle power draw is also higher than the B550 motherboards, almost double, to the tune of 10 watts. And it also requires active cooling. The X570 supports 8 USB Super Speed Plus 10 Gbps ports, the B550 has 2. X570 can support up to 12 SATA 6 Gbps ports, the B550 has support for up to 8. Two super speed 5 Gbps USB ports and six USB high speed 480 Mbps ports on the B550 and on the X570 the 5 Gbps USB port is not supported and only four 480 Mbps high speed ports are supported. At present the B450 and X470 motherboards still make sense for people who are not planning on using a lot of PCI Gen 4 peripherals. Also, any graphics card in the market right now will not saturate a PCI Gen 3 slot. So a PCI Gen 3 GPU slot is still more than enough. There are various B450 motherboards which might support the aforementioned beta BIOS to support the Zen 3 chips, but these rely heavily on the motherboard manufacturers. If future proofing, future CPU support and the use of PCI Gen 4 peripherals is the need, then paying a premium for the B550 and X570 makes sense. Which motherboard would you prefer if you were to build a PC right now? What are the various components that you would use for a build? Do let me know in the comments below. I hope this video was informative. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel for more videos around PC hardware and technology, gaming and let's play videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.